Hey guys, thank you for checking out Bucked Up. Just before we start, I would love if you'd hit the subscribe button, like, share the video. We have new episodes coming out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And starting in the new year, check out Wrapped Up exclusively on Vivo. This episode is sponsored by Exotic Roots Hydro, which I have to give a huge shout out to. They are a huge supporter of the podcast, and I'm really happy to be working with them. If you're ever in Rochester, New York, and you need to learn about any of your hydroponic needs, go to their shop. You can follow them at Exotic Roots Hydro on Instagram. Shout out their whole team. They have an amazing venue space. Uh, they're going to be putting on tons of events. Just make sure to follow Exotic Roots Hydro on Instagram. And if you're ever in Rochester, definitely stop by. Let's get back into it. It was at this moment that he knew. He bucked up. Now he fucked 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 up. Now you have fucked up. It's different. Like, I like that you're doing your own thing. Like, your shit is different than, like, Thank you, anything I've heard. And I really fucked with that. Thank you, bro. Yeah, it, 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 with shit like that, I always look at it like... Like I said, we all like in a community of creatives. Yeah. So to me, I don't want to be the same. I don't want to be a part of the same creative as the other eighty-six guys that surround me. One hundred percent. It don't. It's not really that unique. It's just. Oh, okay. I could just not hear you and hear him, or not yeah. hear him and hear him, or not hear him. And, like. But everyone seems to be supportive. At least, like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. funny how like. <laughs> Uh, supportive, even I, like, I'm a comedian coming in with, like, a self-help podcast, like, and everyone's supportive, or, like, Thousand Words with the Polaroid, like, even, I didn't even know, shout out Jade, who's gonna be on the next episode, I didn't even know, like, she knew everyone, it's cool how everyone, like, wants to help each other, it seems nah, now, sure. more than, like, stories that I've heard from, like, Pat, the past. Nah, yeah, definitely. It's kind of like, um... Like you said, like people can see when somebody's doing their thing and they bring something new to the table. Exactly. So it's like, yo, I can fuck, I fuck with that. Like, yeah. hey, what what could I do to help you expand your thing and what you're doing? Like, are you something. bugging? <laughs> <laughs> That's my shit. <laughs> are you though? Like, I don't think so. Like, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> do you get pushback? Uh, not really. Because it's kind of like, I always describe it kind of like an actual, like, a world being created. Mm -hmm. So, kind of like film. You might go see yeah. a certain film and be like, oh, my God, that particular scene was graphic or it turned me off. But oh out of the whole two and a half hours, you're like, yo, that shit was fucking brilliant. I loved it. Well, that's what like, I loved as a kid. <laughs> like, the, the most, like, gory, the graphic. <laughs> it's like... Uh, Stephen, I've talked about it on the podcast, but Stephen King talks about like feeding the alligators in your brain. So like, you stay calm. Yeah, you know, no, like, that's what I'm Like, no, and, and it's weird. It's weird you said that too, because even not everything I write is dark. But even if I'm writing something lighthearted or just mm -hmm. even with the way the world is going nowadays, it, a lot of stuff been like dark stuff. But yeah, it kind of like I like to write it kind of like at night. Yeah. I always say like at night walk around in the cold weather and do something to the brain like when you write and like sometimes I'll just come from Jersey and just like walk around like and ride back and forth. Do you just write in your head? No, 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 no. On a phone or sometimes I come up with I write in my head in the shower. So I might come up with like mm -hmm. a concept or two or three sentences and then get out, put it down. Or I might just have like a um a general topic that yeah. I never heard before. Like I was telling somebody I want to do a song about um Eating an alien, but the alien's body parts make me smarter. Where I kind of like transform into, so I'm trying to figure out how can I do that, and I need the perfect beat. Like cannibal, not like sexual. Like I'm no, eating. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, I thought yeah. you were like eating alien puss, and like it was Funny making thing? you smarter. Like damn, this alien clit's giving me fucking. I did a song like that about a mermaid. We were do the past three episodes. We've been talking about fucking mermaids, and I don't yeah. know why it keeps coming up. 
Yeah, it was kind of like. Uh, Would you fuck a mermaid? Nah, the, the song Would was. Would you pull the mic a little bit closer? Oh, uh, no problem. No problem. Oh, y'all swimming already? Yeah, I guess we're just. Tired. Oh, oh, okay. See, I wasn't sure because I no, would have been I more. I mean, it's been good. It don't matter. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> we just kind of start whenever, so we oh. could. It'll just kind of like. Okay. All right. Hold on. This officially. Don't say anything. Like I'm just look, kidding. I'm kidding. Nah, I got you. All right. Let's officially. Come up here and try to fucking. Five. Why? <laughs> Do you want to like shake hands? No, 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 no. no. I just, <laughs> <laughs> Mentally, I just wasn't. No, I understand. Can Ten, we talk about nine, fucking eight, this murder? Seven, six. Yeah, we can <laughs> talk about all of that. All right. Seven, six, five, four, three. Okay. All right. You're, fucking you're, mermaid. That's how we start over here. <laughs> that's how we start the fucking the mermaid. <laughs> now, nah, but yeah, that particular song, check it out. It's from 20. 18, I want to say. Mm-hmm. It's called the Egyptian Mermaid Lust. Before or after um, that movie with Willem Dafoe and uh, the, the, the where they, they work out at the lighthouse and they fuck the... Wow, that's one of my favorite movies ever. That What's shit is that fucking, fucking brilliant. Called? I'm the Lighthouse. The Lighthouse, okay, yeah. <laughs> I saw he fucks a, the mermaid at the end. I saw it, it was before that. I was on right. it way before right, Willem Dafoe. Right. <laughs> he might have stole that from me. <laughs> he just is a big fan. I wouldn't be surprised if he was a big fan. <laughs> nah, but kind of like in the song, it was um my girl was a mermaid and she passed away so literally like she she passed away when she was pregnant with my baby Mm -hmm. so she left me clues to kind of like figure out what happened to her type thing like but that shit was dope i gotta do a part two i'm gonna do a part two too y'all like (laughs) did your girlfriend actually pass away or did you no, you that just was, create the yeah, yeah, yeah. that was just something I created. In I my wasn't head. sure. I wasn't oh sure. no, no, no! But it makes <laughs> sense. Like you're talking about the movies, like creating the different worlds for each like song is a different world or throughout a project or something. Yeah, no, for sure, definitely. That's that's, so- that's one of, that's one of my favorite parts, of Ryan. Yeah, like like you was we were just talking about Stephen King mm-hmm. a little bit, like. To me, he's one of my favorites because he he can do anything. You might see The Shining, then you might see Rage, then you yeah. might read Carrie, then you might read. Uh, I forgot this one where it's uh, it's what it's like a short story too, something where I want to say it's called the Black Phone or the Phone Book or something like mm. that. It's a short story, but it's like a guy who was like running from the devil his whole life yeah and then the devil caught him but he died at like age 80 like, really? i've been i like reading that horror i'm reading this book de-evolution right now by max brooks who wrote world war z oh wow and it's about of- it's about fucking bigfoot like a group of bigfoots like murdering this town of people and it's from like the journal entries of the people who did it it's crazy Sheesh. as fuck i love that shit no, i gotta definitely type that's why that. i loved you like i like that world creating music that's different than everything else like uh the first track on um tragic is that the name of the first track on yes, Gandhi sir. Loves children yes sir that was the f- i came up on like i had i have a lot of music to listen to but that just came up on a playlist and i had your album like wanting to listen to it and that came on and i was with uh, my friend shamil and my friend Jay. And oh, well. uh shout out to Shamil and Jay. Shout yeah, shout out tuning in. Much love. They definitely will be. Uh they're big fans of you too, because we listened to that. Much love. We listened to that song, it came on, and then it was part of a playlist, whatever. We sat down literally and listened to the whole album right there. Thank you, bro. No, for much real. That's why and then I reached out to you that night. Cause I know we were talking, but like Much appreciated, bro. That's uh I don't usually do that. Listen to a whole project like right off the bat, right? Right there. Thank you, bro. Nah, for yeah, real. It, it, it's been definitely a blessing with the um the whole reaction and everybody showing the love. And it's crazy because I pretty you probably got put on to it from the deluxe, the one we dropped in June. Yeah, it was I mean good. July with the three mm-hmm. extra songs. Yeah, it's funny because the original came out October 16th for last year, but the first one hit so hard, we put out a deluxe. Shout out yeah. to POW Records for sure. And what made you guy. keep pushing it? Hmm. Honestly, like, I'm from the standpoint of, like, to me, like, I like to push my art kind of, like, the opposite of how they say we supposed to push music today. So... They say you're supposed to do 10 projects a year and 100. Like, to me, I miss the era of 
uh, album that you could just listen to like two or three years mm -hmm. where you like for for example something like uh, Downward Spiral from Nine Inch Nails they tore the yeah. album like three years straight mm -hmm. and it's still fine if you listen to it today <laughs> when it first came out same yeah. thing with all the Bob Marley albums he didn't have to drop an album every Shit. year or yeah. something like Absol that Soul hasn't released something since 2016 <laughs> yeah so to me that's kind of like where I look at my art like every time it Every time it's released, I want you to get something new from it. I want to create something for you. Like I just don't want it to just be songs you hear. Like, oh, okay, yeah. that was good, but I can hear this from this guy and that guy. Like, yeah. And people might get annoyed by me asking this, but this is really what I'm interested in is like pushing through the grind. Like uh, people think like, oh, these bigger podcasts I've gotten recently are like the first ones I've done, but I've been pushing a long time. Like they've been with me since we were in Boston in their tiny little room that we started the podcast and like Hell for, yeah, you to release, for you to release the deluxe a year and some change after and push it and for it to get like the acclaim while well, some people might be like all right we'll move on to the next one like i really fuck with that thank like, you, you believed bro. in your shit thank you yeah and it was just kind of like a situation where i always say like albums is kind of like like I said, going back to just the stories. Mm -hmm. So to me, the first album, 14 tracks, the story was told, but we had extra entries to me for the story yeah. that could kind of push it together and make it more circle and connect more other things in the song. So shout what's out to everybody. The, what, what's the story of it? Because I would like to listen to it now that I'm talking with you with like your eyes on it or your mind on it. Well, I would say... We probably, it's crazy. Shout out to Roper Williams, too. Yes, yeah. The one and only Roper Will did all the beats on it. Killed those. Thank you, bro. But I would say kind of, we recorded it within probably like a two to three year period. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, so we took our time with it. And yeah. it was crazy because we knew each other for probably like six or seven years before that. So when we first met, we kind of hit it off quick, and we both was doing music already. So the album y'all hear, like I said, it was probably two or three years in the making, but we started it probably three other times, and we would link up, do a song. What was the first track you made off of it? On the one that's released, probably I'm bugging. That was the first one? Yeah, it was that and Church Towers was before that. But we put that out as a 7-inch uh, or just a video like yeah. a year before the album came out. It's mm -hmm. kind of like just a teaser. But yeah, like we we would do like one or two tracks, maybe fall out of touch for a minute just with both our lives and careers going to different. Yeah. Link up again, do maybe one or two more tracks, get, fall apart again. And like the last time we linked up like three years ago, we was like, yo, let's just lock in and get this album done. Like, And we was going for something that nobody was doing like we was like yo like let's. why did you finally lock in that time kind of just like we was what we was hearing in the music industry with everybody it was kind of like the same shit yeah. it was kind of like we didn't hear we didn't hear anything like we know we could have brought to the table yeah. and i think we like accomplished that for sure so shout out to everybody who was who been supporting and showing love to that what were you making before that <laughs> Other, before that, I got the Ape Twin EP. Mm -hmm. That's one with the shout out to my brother Sidetrack, Age of Extinction. That was a duo I was doing. We dropped the project 2016. Okay. So, and besides that, just a bunch of features, loose singles, stuff like that. Yeah. So, GLC was the third, fourth. Third project, third or fourth project. Oh wow! Officially, and yeah. then the new one's so different. Woo! So different. You see, I gave my man Sam the, the exclusive. <laughs> By the time this come out, it might be out. So I don't even know. I think this will probably be out next week, even. So. Okay, yeah. So yeah, it's still no. gonna be exclusive. Yeah. But yeah, like the new project EP. That's all I'll tell y'all for now. Yeah. Another one producer project, but. How long have you so been working on that? We started that. I want to say last summer. Last okay. July, we started that. So you really do sit with your project. Yeah, for a minute. Because yeah. some people come in and say, like, oh, I make a project in a night, which is, I like, <laughs> I honestly like that. Like, I just read Gucci's book. Like, I just finished that, and I really, like, I admire his grind and hustle, but, like, yeah, no, I it's... also like this because it shows in the fucking, like. Thank you, bro. It, do it doesn't, you couldn't make Gandhi Loves Children in a year. Yeah, I don't think yeah. You couldn't no. make you couldn't make I'm sorry, but what's the name of the new project? 
uh, Cyber City Society. Cyber City Society. You yeah. could make that in three to six <laughs> months. You know what I mean? Nah, yeah, it's definitely... Um, I always say, like... I play a mental. I play a waiting game, like mentally and spiritually, with when I create stuff and try to put it where it's like, all right, like for example, like, and I can show you some some new stuff, like when we get off air. But yeah. I got my next like four projects done already, like getting mixed and everything. So and it's totally different than <laughs> Cyber City, all four limbs. Yeah. So are you gonna wait to release those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just plotting them out now, kind of like where I want to place them and maneuver them around, but. Even, yeah, like, doing a project in the night, like I said, it's nothing against it. And if you can make some dope stuff, why not? But just with the way I work, I, I probably can never do that. Like, because even with just production, yeah, like, a lot of times I'll get a beat and I might sleep to it, like, for, like, two or three months. I like, saw just, you said that in an interview, that you, like, sleep to your music. Yeah, yeah. I'll get a beat from a producer and just put it on the big speaker when I'm sleeping. And usually I'll sleep and dream to it. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'll be listening to, like for example, uh, Smithsonian. Um, I was listening to that probably like a good month. And usually with stuff like that, I'll see colors in my head from the production at different shapes, at different just images and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, how can I put this message through how can i describe these colors and shapes and words for people to understand and then once i figure that out the song is pretty much written and you sit there you write well you said you walk while you write but you walk write, sleep if, yeah. yeah i have to be active when i write like i have to be doing something else i'm very bad at like sitting in place and writing can you do that like yeah that, when you that, wake up like when you go over your dreams is that what you do yeah that the majority of my writing i do is kind of sitting still because i see the sleeping or just i might go in my basement turn all the lights off and just play a beat and just think of different word patterns and rhyme association and yeah. just yeah it, it varies <laughs> and do you have like an idea for like a cohesive line and when you have come up with like when you have a beat like do you make the song or are you just trying to express the like shapes and colors that you see kind of like a mixture of both because sometimes i'll start maybe from a chorus and i'll be like okay this chorus sounds fire how can these words match this chorus yeah or i might say all right this beat sounds like let's say a child walking down the street in the middle of harlem going to a a, 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 a horse fight how can I put words that can describe that picture yeah. painted in my head? So. You said spiritually when you're spiritually done with that. Yeah. That's how you know when something's done. Yeah, yeah. That, like, like when intuition I Intuition voice. Yeah, when I can kind of write it, spit it, be like, all right, yeah, that's yeah. pretty like. You fuck with hallucinogens? Uh, nah, not really. You ever do them? Nah. I'm surprised. I don't know why, but I feel like. <laughs> Funny thing, a bunch of people some, told me that before. You might even <laughs> have, have you ever rapped about it? Like, I don't even know. I feel like maybe, but I don't know. Yeah, it seems like you would in your music, but you, your mind probably already works like that. Yeah, my mind is all over the place. How did you focus it? Kind of like um, different kind of tactics I always did since I was younger. So maybe just drawing out certain things. Uh, Sometimes I just like to sit in silence. Like <laughs> We yeah. don't do that enough in the world. Meditation, I think. Yeah. yeah. just like... Close your eyes, sit, breathe, get everything together. And I write everything down, too. So I'm like, all right, I got to do this. I got to do that. How long do you sit in silence? Uh, probably. I could go as long as probably two and a half hours, three hours. For real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're good with yourself. <laughs> I literally do like a Headspace 15-minute meditation. I feel like I'm going to crawl out of my skin. <laughs> <laughs> 15 minutes is good though Most people can't do that No so, most people so, can't Go give sit props for go that for sure Fucking count your breath For 15 <laughs> minutes But two and a half hours Is wild Did you have to like Practice up to that? Yeah sometime Cause it's kinda It'll start maybe From just like A feeling about something Yeah So I might have a conversation With like My father Or a friend of the family And the conversation Is a deep conversation so I might just sit and think about the conversation for like 
a half an hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. And then I might be like, I want to talk about this conversation, but not talk about it in a way that it's this or that, kind of like what you saying inside of the conversation yeah. with it type thing. So. I don't mean to have uh, judged you isn't the proper word, but uh, you're much more like... Uh, yeah, we have a <laughs> champagne tonight. We're drinking Clap, the y'all, fucking... give it up. We haven't got Bel Air. Oh yeah, hang that. The fancy bottle. We, we got... Look at this. You see this? There we go, right here. You see this? Right here. When you come to Bucked Up, you get <laughs> fucked up. That That's what it's all true. about. God damn it. I'll roll up a Join, I'll make you take a hit. Oh, uh, uh, let's do it. No, but I'll you do it are, for you. If, you are very much more like uh, calm than I expected you to be. <laughs> it's 8 p.m. now. You got to catch me 3 a.m. coming out of the strip club. Are you wild? Are you wild? Do you party like that? I love the party, man. We got to go party after this. <laughs> we, we, we go to the, we go on the party Yo, right after this. Shout, I, Jade, so she's sober. Like, she doesn't do anything, but, like, she party. She's up late with the best of them. Like, Hell, yeah, we that's were family out, right there. We we were, have a, me and Jade always have a good time whenever we, we, we link up. How did y'all meet? <sighs> Through my uh, people, Bugavelli. He knew her, and... They was cool, and we met probably this past summer for the first time, and we just clicked right off the bat. Great person too, so wicked, yeah. I love her her to death. The Bruiser Thanksgiving, and it was just dope. Like, I was like, who? Because her and I stood out more than most people. So I was like, (laughs) who is this? And I was tripping on mushrooms. So I was like, when I'm tripping, I'll just talk to anyone. Good old fat, the good old solo Simon. Hell yeah, exactly. You're right. I know you got to do it sometimes. (laughs) Get right. Yeah. DMT. I can't believe you've never done any of that. That's wild. I like to, I like to keep the spirit full right. of liquor, Chinese food, and edibles. I'm an edible guy. Like, See, the way you, you feel off the, the way you feel off DMT is how I feel off edibles. I don't do you not do you take high quantities? Yeah. Like what? I would like to think so. <laughs> like uh, it's funny because I'm not super with the whole like um What's the word? Studying the different milligrams is kind of just like you just take. Ah, you got them. Let's take them. Like, yeah, I'm one of those types. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna. Is it thirty? Is it two thousand? Is it? I'm like, bro, give me three of them things. Give me an hour and a half and just. But you don't like smoking. I don't like the smell of smoke though. That's kind of oh, like, oh, yeah, like yeah. I can deal with it, but and that's in your clothes and shit. Yeah, I edibles. I could take those behind. You would never know it. I could just walk somewhere. Hey, yeah. how you doing? Like the artwork for the new project. <laughs> did that come before? Did you like? Did that was that with the project? Did you give him the project and then he did it? Because that's crazy with the. Oh. I won't describe. I don't want to. Like, oh no no no! Shout out to uh, Shane Ingersoll. When y'all see, y'all will see. One of the best right there with the with the, with the, with that drawing. It's insane. Thank you, bro. Yeah, it was kind of like um, we kind of linked minds with the overall idea, and mm. I sent him some tracks to listen to to say like, all right, the fill this in, <laughs> fill yeah, these yeah. songs, and like kind of have it describe these songs and. He said the back and it was beautiful. Like, Crazy. Loved, I know the it. detail in it. I, I can't wait it, for people to see it and listen to the project. I love it. You said when's it dropping? We going for next month, so February. We got a video. We shot the video for um the last song off of it. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we yeah. got a video coming real soon and we probably drop a little after or a little before. We still getting all of that t- <laughs> ironed out right now. Yeah. Shout out to Lone Sword for sure. What was the idea behind that album? Or EP? Yeah, EP. Uh, EP. Yeah. All right. Well, again, shout out to Long Sword. Definitely, like, one of the best producers, MCs out here, my brother Longs. Check out that Birth of Long Sword album right now, too, if y'all haven't. But, yeah, like, the production he was making at the time, like, it gave me that... It gave me an ill, like... Blade Runner futuristic New York City vibe. One hundred percent. So yeah. like I'm listening to it and I'm just like, all right, how can I, how can I, how can I craft this yeah. to make these, how can I craft these words to go with these perfect beats? Like totally. And it, it was a few other joints we that didn't make the final cut that we probably still put out on something later think, down the line. Yeah. But they'll see the light of day. Yeah, but the 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 joints that we got. Strong, strong, strong. I love it. <laughs> what was the uh, idea behind the cover of uh, GLC? 
funny I'm thing. feeling I'm already get, feeling some of this belt. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, the funny yeah. thing is we still, we still got, got this. I usually get stoned on this podcast. Usually oh, we get I'm getting good, I'm getting you saucy gonna, today, baby. Yo, Jade's gonna be <laughs> sitting there. I'm like, yeah. Anymore, so, anymore? What did you yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. This Cheers. Is, this is me during the next podcast. Buck, so when did you buck up? Danny Brown. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's the behind the album cover of GLs? Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm feeling it too. Shit. That's that's what what I, we finished that bottle. <laughs> about to open this one. <laughs> no, it's kind of. By the way, also I got I think I caught the flu shooting that damn album cover because I was in my underwear 25 degree weather. But that's the sacrifice we willing to make for the art. You're cutting diamonds. <sighs> I was cold as hell. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Like I knew I was gonna get sick though, because I'm like, it's no way I should be regular after I yeah. I'm standing out here for five hours and the wig wasn't warm enough. <laughs> no, nothing. But yeah, it was kind of like shout out to uh, Derek. My boy Derek Belanger, he did the uh, all of the cinematography on that. Yeah. So we went out and we took a bunch of different pictures, and it was funny because Roper picked that picture because <laughs> like another, one of the pictures I picked, we ended up using for just press photos, mm -hmm. and the one he picked, he was like, "Yo, for some reason, there's something about this picture. Like I'm loving this particular one." So I'm looking at it. I'm like, "Okay, yeah, that shit is dope." Like, and the more I sat with it. I just get, I gave the picture more of like an identity in my head, kind of like how I went with the music, kind of like you see. Well, us. Like why it was, it's a Reagan mask, right? Yeah, like no, I, the wig and the Reagan mask. No, I was gonna say the. I always love just like, kind of like expressionless emotion, mm -hmm. like I call it. So it's kind of like you see the cover, you see me standing there with the wig, smiling. You see Reagan, blank face, blank stare. White Two outfit. different, yeah, white, uh, white, white outfit. Two different emotions, yeah. but literally. At and the you're same, handcuffed, right? And I'm handcuffed at the same thing. <laughs> so we kind of were saying, I, right, this picture has to speak the music. The intensity <laughs> of the music has to go along with the intensity of the picture. So yeah, at, like we definitely think we we, we nailed it with that one. Like 100%. most people that see the cover, they like yeah, the album. I'm not surprised the album <laughs> sounds like this. Yeah. The armor. What do you think? Oh. Mm. Nasty man probably uh -oh, has uh -oh, my crazy. Hear <laughs> you hear the coconut? Yeah, I hear it. I've open. never the coconut. The coconut. That's what you uh, requested. Coconut Amsterdam. <laughs> I feel like I'm back in college. Like, I usually mix it with Everclear. With, you mix it with Everclear. I usually Ever mix it with Everclear, but tonight, oh we just going to do the Coconut Amsterdam. Just, you, just you ever drink Caribou Lou like a real Tech 9 fan? <laughs> Funny thing, I always heard about Caribou Lou strictly from him, but I never get it's a chance Malibu to It's Malibu 151 and pineapple juice. It sounds good. Like, it does. Yeah, it I'm going to say it sounds like tasty. I, I just never got a chance to tap in. We got to get some of those. What's the most lit? I, I feel like you probably have a crazy story about getting lit. You said strip club at fucking 3 a.m. Uh, crazy lit story. Oh, I got one for you. <laughs> I've only had bad experiences at strip clubs. All of them? I've only been to... Two times and both were bad experiences. Yes. What's your definition of bad experience, though? Do you want to hear? I've told these stories, but I feel like I want to tell. So the tell first time, a chick <laughs> brought me on a first date Jeez. to a strip club, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't like that. And it was during it was during quarantine, so they had like plastic up around the stage and shit. So like, the fucking her and the stripper touched titties through the plastic and shit. It just wasn't a good. It was just weird. It was. That's. Good. I'm not gonna lie. That's great. I want to see two strippers. I want to see two people touch titties. Through plastic. No, I, I have a stand-up bit about that. All I could think about is, have you ever seen the movie The Boy in the Striped Pajamas? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so what's the second bad the one? second story. So I told my friend Thatcher, shout out Thatcher Wood. Uh, he was there that first night. He came along while I was on the date. And then he was like, well, that was a bad experience. Let me buy you a lap dance. Like, we'll go again. I'll buy you a lap dance. And this uh Oh, was like, that could go bad, too. Yeah, it was like this <laughs> old 45-year-old woman because we went in too late. So she was the only one that no one, like, had chose. You know, she was like the last kid getting picked for dodgeball. And she's 
shit. Floor. She's just sitting in the corner all sad and shit. See, those are the ones I befriend. I go up to the 45 year ones in the corner, like, darling, listen, I don't care what they told you in here. You're the sexiest thing moving. <laughs> Let's go nah, dance. No. Nah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so she goes and to give me the fucking lap dance. She brings me in the back and she goes, "Just so you know, I got in a horrendous car accident last month. So don't touch my face or upper chest because they're in horrific pain." God damn! Like, I'd be like, "So am I? I'm getting the fuck out of here." Yeah, That's yeah. a terrible uh, introduction. I'm telling you this shit. <laughs> See, I, I never dealt with that, and it gets worse. Oh it lord, no. Worse. <laughs> you know, she goes and she puts it in the back. I don't know if you've ever had like old woman titties who had like fake breasts and they like solidify. I think I might have sucked a couple of those. You know how they like solidify? I was like when you see those videos. I gotta keep it like, honest, man. We gotta keep it a buck. I, I feel like we strictly <laughs> keep it under the buck tonight. You feel me? <laughs> but you know how like a hot like a those videos were like a McDonald's hamburgers left for like two years, Jeez. and then they pull it out and it's like hardened. That's what those titties turn into. Oh. And then she puts my shirt, takes my shirt, puts it over my head, and starts titty twistering me. See, I got my titties sucked <laughs> in the strip club. I never got my titties twisted. I don't that's want my nother, titties sucked. That's a whole nother, uh, that's a whole nother level. You got I your titties sucked? Yeah, yeah I, got, I got my nipples Did you ask too. for it? No, but it was great. You I like that? Like, uh-uh. It was fun. Mm -mm. I got the shirt, I got the lap dance, and then she started sucking on the uh, nipples, and I'm just like, oh... This is fun. Let me just lay here like a small baby. And <laughs> oh, God. Goo goo gaga. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you put on a bonnet? Is <laughs> that a diaper? I'm and doing a that next time. <laughs> a bonnet. But it was fun. Diaper. I wouldn't get it. I wouldn't get. I wouldn't get it done every time. But you should go to the foxy cool. lady in Providence, Rhode Island. <laughs> That's where. I never <laughs> been to Providence, Rhode Island. Crazy enough. Really? I gotta, I gotta go out. I just stand up there last night. Oh, word. How are you? All right, so you <laughs> is that the craziest? Oh no no no! That's okay. why I should never go to a strip club. Like you heard. <laughs> Do y'all agree with him? Do y'all think he should never go again? He's holding on. Again. He's holding on to two experiences from a long time ago. That happened like within the past year and a half. Both a long those. time ago. You're going you, to the wrong strip club. Yeah. <laughs> I'll and go the with wrong you. Time of day too. See, okay. Can we have a just because Susan Sarandon put her titties in your mouth? <laughs> that don't mean that the strip club not a fun spot. Goddamn! <laughs> I'm gonna take you. To, I'm gonna take you around some nice, beautiful women that's not 65 years old, and we gonna have a good night. And without the solidified titties. Yes. Oh no! Now going back, the craziest. Well, this is on film, so. <laughs> When, uh, this is all allegedly. <laughs> no, no, this is, my know. peoples, they threw me a surprise birthday party like probably two or three years ago. Hey guys, this episode is sponsored by producer out of Syracuse, New York, Twist L's. He makes dope lo fi beats. He has a bunch of tapes on Bandcamp that you should all check out. But uh, if you want to work or get amazing lo fi beats, hit him up at lo fi.lucifer on Instagram. That's L O F I. Dot L U C I F E R. Uh, check him out. He's an amazing dude. Thankfully, sponsors the podcast. Let's get back into it. Me and one of my peoples, we was having a drink contest with some money on the line. So it was like, all right. How drink. much money are we talking? It was a good amount. <laughs> it was a good amount. It was a good amount to drink all night. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, we about to drink this, this and that. So we like, all right, bet. So we were taking Everclear shots. So I took two edibles in the middle of it, just randomly. You like, don't know what they are. I'm just like, I want some edibles, damn it. I took two edibles. We got to 18 Everclear shots, I think, a piece. God. I know. <laughs> You're an animal with that. The police shut down the whole party. <laughs> I thought so, they should shut down and say, like, 18 Everclear shots. <laughs> there you go, woo! So, <laughs> so, as soon as they come in, they come in, party's over, everybody go home. Okay, we're going to go home. As soon as I walk out of the party, the edibles hit me. Bang. So, the Everclear is not even a factor at this point. The, ed the edibles just had me like, oh, shit. So, 
So I'm laying in the back of my boy car. They're like, yo, we about to go to a diner. I'm like, all right, let's go to a diner. We go to the diner. I swear it felt like we was there three days. We was there maybe an hour. I'm like, yo, I'm hot as shit. You also took 18 <laughs> shots to ever. No, but literally, I'm telling you, the edibles were so short and the Everclear didn't even count. <laughs> like, the edibles really had me like, can't talk, can't see. Like, I was like, yo. Could you please like take me up? Like I had to drink some ginger ale to like. I was like high for the next day. I think this was like a Saturday night. I didn't feel regular till like eight o'clock the next night. <laughs> like, like you popped a Zan. <laughs> no, it was it, it was like scary. And I was like, what the hell is going? Like, I'm gonna die. Yeah, I got way too high off edibles with my dad at a Weird Al Yankovic concert. <laughs> Shout out to Weird Al. The goal. He's amazing, but I like, love Weird especially Al. live. And he can rap his ass off. I never seen him live. I got to tap in live. It was with the boss. I love the Running with Scissors albums. Yeah, That's dude, he's shit. fucking good. <laughs> I'm rolling up a joint while we talk. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Hell yeah, get it. No, in. what's the best fucking strip club experience? Oh, see, I couldn't break it down to just one. Every time I go, it's a new adventure for me. It's like an earnest movie. It's People, a new, oh, it's, it's a new, it's a new. It's thing. a mentally challenged guy. <laughs> with you. No, but every time I go, it's a new experience. Like. <laughs> Yeah, we get we get into the nitty gritty now. What do you think we you're into the nitty? Oh, he's, nitty. Th- he's doing the shots too. Of course. What do you think? I don't even know if you know your bars like this, but what do you think your wildest bar is? It probably wasn't ever recorded, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I want to hear those. Hey. Bars. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Nah, but see, to me, like I said, kind of going back to... I'm not saying it in a bad way. Oh, no, no, no. I love it, like... No, no, no. I was kind of going to put it with the analogy of film we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. Like, me and my... um, Me and my boy, we always, like... Not joke, but we always bug out on how random the uh, Gimp scene is in Pulp Fiction. Yeah. And we like, yo... (laughs) That was randomly thrown in to like just mess with the people's brain. Yeah. But we like that don't take away from the power of the movie. It might bring it up an extra level just because you're like, yo, what the fuck? Like, yeah. this has to have something to do with something. Like, 100%. so I kind of look at it, I kind of look at it right in the same way. Like, yeah. Like, I might talk about family in one song, I might talk about something. That's going on in the country or whatever in another song. The third song might just hit you with some, oh, my God, I can't believe that was said. Yeah. But to me, that don't take the power away from the other one. And it kind of connects it all together. Like, Was there anyone, like, did you always rap like that? Like, not Karen? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And were there people <laughs> who were like, oh, don't do that. Like, don't say shit like that. Funny thing, I never really got that. I, I might have had little slick comments here and there, but Nothing. I never got, yeah, I never really got Because in the like, comedy world, that's so big. Like, I'm pretty watered down now because of how, like, censored I got in the beginning. It's funny. You think Boston would be, like, you can say whatever in the comedy, but it's so, like... Shout out to Town. <laughs> shout out, but their comedy seems so politically correct. Like, you can't even oh, mention yeah. anything, really, or you'll get talked to after a show, like... <laughs> We got, we got, we got. I'm gonna come out there and get it straight, man. They can't be, they can't be, they can't be taking the, the power away from the comedy, man. No, but that's <laughs> why I didn't know if that was like a thing in like rap, honestly. Cause yeah, no, nah, I never really had to do Cause that's with... why I think Shamil's a comedian too. That's why I think we loved it. Cause it's like, oh, it's like, it's freeing seeing someone like you be free and thank you, bro. Like, even in your style, everything, like, it's, fr- it makes you like, it's like a breath of fresh air. Thank you, bro. No, it's definitely, like I said, and I kind of connect stand up with it. Yeah. Just like film and book, right? Like, to me, it's all about creating these worlds. Like, if we're not creating these worlds, we might as well not even do it. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, like, hey, you create a world on stage, you create a world here. We create a world in the booth. We create a world on film. Like, you're a so. movie guy. You're real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What horror? Everything really. Mm-hmm. Like, kind of. Just, I'm just. I'm just a big creative guy. On <laughs> on top of that, like, because even with certain stand up, like, I watch certain stand up, and the the so called punchline of the joke won't even be my favorite part. I'm like, yo, did you hear what he said like, in the middle of the joke? That was dope. Is that yeah. like, so. But that's probably how people feel feel about your music. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, when did you start? Get so you, so the album came out. Did you get any like? Were people fucking with it right when it came out? 
Yeah, I was going to say, like, I want to say surprisingly, but kind of like me and Roper knew how strong it was when we mm-hmm. was pushing for it. Because even, like, it originally was supposed to come out in March. But that's when everything jumped off with the pandemic and everything. So we, like, we both said it don't, it don't seem appropriate if now. That al- no, that's if that album dropped, there would be a different, it would have a completely different, like, feeling behind it. Yeah, we was it. like, yeah. we was like, let's wait on it. Let's beef up the um, rollout a little more. And we dropped in October of that year. And from the gate, it kind of just, like, hit with people. And more and more people connected to it. More and more, it got put on in more and more circles so and then you be a blessing for sure and then the deluxe came out yeah that was, was like, that enhanced it kind of yeah. like for people who didn't um that's funny roper just texted me oh really yeah no because i had texted him like yo um the blueberry glaze in manhattan by penn station is the worst and then he put it's not a good flavor duh <laughs> i'm like <"He's> right <laughs> <laughs> how did you guys link up about um oh you you said uh you said like you knew each other for a little bit like six no it's funny my boy shout out to dj bookavelli i used to do this radio show like seven or eight years ago this hip-hop radio show in jersey and oh really yeah and roper had a rap group he was doing production for at the time and i was doing these on-air cyphers and they came to one of them the whole group came it might have been like five or six people Mm -hmm. and they killed the cypher. I'm like, yo, you dope, da 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 da. And we hit it, we hit it off, like just immediately, immediately yeah. just from different, similar sense of humor, same type of music taste, and all of that. Like, and I started coming to the studio sessions and just hearing new music and all of that. And I'm like, yo, something special about this dude, like with, with this production, like, yeah, it don't sound like nobody. Like, I love the. I love stuff that don't sound like nothing else. Like, mm-hmm. if it's dope, because it could not sound like nothing and it's terrible. But when it's dope, and I'm like, yo, I can see, I can picture this in my brain. Like, yeah. And well, that's why I'm so excited to hear. That's why we talked about Bruiser Wolf beforehand. Like, when I heard his thing, it was kind of similar. To Wolf, for sure. Shout out to Bruiser, Bruiser was Wolf. killing this year, man. Killing Bruiser it. Bruiser was killing. I Shout know. out to the whole Bruiser Brigade. They was going crazy. This all of Bruiser Brigade. Beautiful. Brigade. beautiful. And all quality music, too. For sure. Quality music and quality dudes. Like, really good dudes. That, again, Shout part to of the. Like, yeah. I love all of that Detroit music. It was cool going out there for the first time. Where, how was it? It was dope? It was awesome. It was awesome. And oh, yeah. for Thanksgiving. It yeah, was I never dope. tapped into I got to go out to Detroit. Doing mushrooms with Bruiser Wolf on Thanksgiving at 3 a.m. That sounds beautiful. <laughs> that was, and he's a fucking... I have to finish. I'm sorry. How about to say, Sam, you better drink your... your I have a whole ass podcast after this. Are you kidding me? He over here babysitting his champagne. I can't be fucked up for the next podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. What's your girlfriend's name over there? You uh oh, <laughs> Tell him. Tell him about himself, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> sorry. Now he came in a professional. I, clap it up for uh, professionality. I, I respect. I respect the professionality. You didn't. See? I still no. We we're not dodging the question. What do you think your crazy your most bugging bars are? I don't know. I would have. To, it's probably something that never came out yet, or literally, I don't think I had wrote it yet. To tell you the truth, mm-hmm. like. Because even certain things in my head, I'm like, oh, that would be dope. Yeah. But then I'm just like, eh. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> to me, certain things in my brain, like, I'm like, that's not ready to be said yet. Maybe next year. Like, I, that's I'm like, so crazy. Because like, that's how I feel about jokes. I'm like, all oh, right. Yeah. I'll about, you got to plan it out sometimes. Exactly. You got to yeah. plan out the punch. Yeah. You, <laughs> don't, you don't know how to, like, express it right. But that's why. Uh, is it Nasty Man or Nasty One? Nasty Man. Nasty Man. That, that was one of the shit. last songs we made for the album. Oh, really? That's yeah. probably my favorite track on the album. Yeah, that's a favorite. A yeah, lot of that people, one's yeah. really good. That bar about the fucking chick following the doors. Um, oh, 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 oh. Um, uh, um, um, uh, travel uh, with Tracy. She probably uh, suck a sword. Yeah, yeah. 64. <laughs> Don't touch the door. In 1964, she used to fuck Follow the doors. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was the girl I was probably at the show club. The girl I used to fuck the doors. The one that, <laughs> that she had her titties in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. The 80-year-old lady that yeah. used to fuck the door. You ever seen 40-year-old virgin? 
Yeah. With Steve Carell. Yeah. Where he, they find out he's a virgin and he's like, you know, you're sucking on titties and they feel like a bag of sand. Jeez. And they're like, that's what it felt like. But that's when they called him out. My pants are still wet as shit from the beginning when this exploded on me. you're thinking about that lady that titties felt like shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, yeah, I need to, the Providence strip clubs aren't it. The Providence strip clubs are. I want to come out there and tap me because you're making them sound bad. They probably they are probably, bad. They probably they, it's probably more than one. I know it's more than one out there though. You might yeah. have went to one that had no, a bad experience. See, I don't need that shit. I'll be wild like with that. I'll just, I like being wild. Other than that, yeah. I was with Conway up in Reading, and he doesn't believe that I get hoes every time. Jesus he, Lord! Every time he sees me, he's like, "How are the hoes?" And I want to like look him in the eye. I'll look into the camera. I'll be like, "Conway, I, you don't even know how much I fuck." <laughs> like, Tell him, man. <laughs> he doesn't believe a fuck it. Machine. He doesn't believe it. I don't need the strip club. See, I'm a fuck machine, goddamn. Fu- fu- Conway. That should be the name of your stand up. A fuck machine. <laughs> Sam, instead of Conway the machine, it's <laughs> Sam the fuck machine. machine. Hell yeah. yeah. Branded right now. Brand- <laughs> Ella, not Ella. This <laughs> is a registered. <laughs> Register it. Nah. I want to hear some crazy. You you don't have anything like that you have it that you couldn't put in a song because it was too wild. You can't remember anything. I know this is no. I would put I would put I would put it all in a song. I just probably didn't write it even write it yet. So you probably didn't even get to the 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 song making process. You don't even think about it. Like you don't think about like oh this could like nah like because a lot of times like I said. I look at it as art. So if somebody not feeling it, they just not feeling it. Yeah. I can't make you feel like one hundred percent. Yeah, you could not like it or That's why I fuck with that's why like the West Side Gun with the Hitler shit, like <laughs> It's funny because he was doing that for a minute and it seemed like he started getting super um like Popular. Backlash on it later. Yeah, they yeah, took down. I, I wasn't. Shit. Yeah, I wasn't hearing about it when it fir- when he first was doing it. I was hearing more about the backlash later. They took down his. Um, they took down his uh, fucking thing that he had up in Times Square, like the b- billboard in Times Square, and um, they put in. Oh, sorry. I just want to make sure this is um, no. And they put in like an anti like anti anti Semitic billboard instead, you know, like don't yeah. cause anti Semitism. Which I agree with one hundred percent. You should yeah. not. Yeah. But it's also like they didn't just hate like they wouldn't have liked West Side Gun either. Like I don't think they got the mes- message behind it. You know what I mean? Yeah, he had explained it. He said it was just kinda like him trying to do a flip of the Devil Wears Prada. Yeah, Hitler like, Wears yeah. Hermes. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm like What how did you come up with the title Gandhi Loves Children? From the song Tragic, funny enough. Cause it, it's um it was the third bar on the second uh second verse. Uh Trump winning, Cosby Lust Women, Gandhi. Yeah, Lust yeah. Women, like, and it's funny because when we was looking for album titles. Roper had brought that up. He was just like, yo, for some reason, it's Gandhi Loves Children Bar. Like, it keeps playing in my head. It keeps playing in my head. And I'm like, he was like, yo, that shit is, that shit is going to be a dope title or something. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I think it might have been like a 10 second pause. I'm like, you're absolutely right. Because I know nothing else will be called that that comes out in the next 10 years. Gandhi yeah. Loves Children, it is. And it worked next. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny that he like picked the image and the the name from it because that goes back to like the spirituality like no one when it's done like you kind of have to just leave it up to that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, cuz it was cuz I know we we might have had we might have been building on maybe one or two other titles. What were they? Do you remember what they were? Not at all, to tell you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember that one like I was on the phone one on one day and I'm just like, "Yo, um how we? How you feeling about the title? I was like, and, and a lot of times with stuff like that, like, cause I came up with the idea for the cover. Mm-hmm. So with the us uh, standing there with the red, cause I remember like the way me and him work is kind of like 
I would tell him stuff would come to me like when it's supposed to come to me. Yeah. So he won't even act like he'll bring it up to me like, yo, what do you think about what you feeling for the cover or maybe a song? And I'm just like, yo, it'll come to me when it comes to me. You believe your intuition. Yeah. So I just called him one day like, yo, the cover going to be a Ronald Reagan mask, uh, wig. This is He like, all right, cool. And usually like that'd be it. Like it won't really be a, what does it mean? Like, cause you yeah. know, if I'm coming to him with it, 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 it fits in the summer. You thought it through. Yeah. Yeah. And it was kind of like that with that. We was building on different tech. He was just like, yo, Connie loves children. He was like, yo, that, 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 um, those words. They're, those words together sound crazy. He was like, they keep popping in my head. They keep popping in my head. And I'm like, okay, that's the album then. Do you remember writing that bar? Yeah, yeah. Because I remember, I want to say I recorded that. And I want to say I recorded that, Smithsonian, and my verse for Fly Pelican in the same session. Oh, wow. Because I got all of those beats at the exact same time, I want to say. All three of them. And then how did YL get on a Fly Pel- Pelican? Oh, yeah. Roper already was cool with YL and I knew him for years like he been yeah. killing shit doing this thing and Roper that was Roper again he was like yo I want to get YL on this joint and I'm like alright hell yeah like <laughs> let's do it like I laid my first send it to him he came back with his verse oh that's fire we got a joint let's do the video Shout out to the bro Derek. He came through, shot some ill. We went to Chinatown, went to Rucker Park, yeah, over there by the Apollo Theater. Thank you, bro. And killed it. And yeah. But that song's very different than everything else on the album, I feel. Yeah, no. And it's fun. like the most accessible. If I don't. No, that's literally. That's a, literally. You're absolutely right. <laughs> no, because that was kind of like Roper. Like, we would sit and. We always said we kind of like um, the devil on his shoulder and the, uh, the, like. Yeah. So I remember when the album when we was putting it together, he was like, "Yo, we need one joint that's kind of like that everybody can just." Mm-hmm. And then he was like, "Yo, let's get YL in this joint," and I'm like, "All right, cool." So my verse, I was like, "All right, I want to make it. I want to make everybody be able to connect to it, but I want to still do my Fat Boy Sharif shit on it." Yeah. So, you don't want to have to change who yeah, you are. Yeah. So. If you listen, like, listen to it lyrically, I kind of wrote it like something like Slick Rick would spit, <laughs> where it's kind of like, I'm like, all right, I'm going to talk about some fly, fly shit, but I'm going to talk about it in the most out there way possible that you know it can't be like, like or some shit. Yeah. So that's why I'm just like, all right, uh, Grants with the Ghost, Red Carpet Treatment as I stand with the Pope. Like, you know I'm not standing with the Pope. No, but Sounds it's still <laughs> like, shit. Yeah, yeah right. so I'm like, once I wrote that, I'm like, all right, this is fine. But that makes sense <laughs> compared to everything else, how, like, you're making stories with these. These are like... <laughs> Because, nah, sure. of course. And because, you know, one of my favorite bars, and it's true, but it makes sense, is the fucking ever since, it's fucking, what did he say, ever since Paul was fucking Richie Jr. or something? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I've, been, I've been ill since Paul Mooney fucked Richie Jr. <laughs> yeah, that shit. That's one of my favorite ones. Too. That's one of my favorite I ones. I that was hard. That's a hard bar. I'm sorry, I don't mean to just, like, quote bars at you. Oh, no, ask no, no, you no, about no. that shit. No, no. I do the same thing with Bruiser when I interviewed no, him. No, that was a hard bar, like, I ain't gonna lie. That, is that was when I wrote like, sheesh. Yeah. I'm about to say, and it's funny too, because like. <laughs> that's one of those parts, it's like, God damn, that's yeah. hard as shit. <laughs> no, that was kind of like something where I kind of, I wrote that song in sections, because even like Tragic, like mm-hmm. certain songs I might write, like tra- like the beginning of Tragic was like, just like an IG post, like the first, the first four bars of it. Oh, really? And I was just like, yo, I'm going to make a song surrounding this. And I did that. So Nasty Man was kind of like the same so thing. So Gandhi Loves Children, you rapped in just like a Instagram post. No, 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 no. That was in the second verse. Oh, The oh. first three bars from the first verse. Okay. I just wrote it as an Instagram post. And I'm like, yo, this is fire. I'm going to build on this and make a whole concept. You never thought that would be the... It, the first bars you ever put out on like your debut album. <laughs> Isn't that your, that's your debut. No, no, no. That's the third or fourth joint. Okay. Remember, I was saying that I had the. Yeah, but the it, others aren't on like major streaming, or are they? All Bandcamp. On Bandcamp. Yeah, all all okay. Bandcamp yeah, releases. Yeah. So. yeah. First one on every on no the Aim Twin project is on all of the streaming. Oh, uh, like uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of like that with Nasty Man. Mm-hmm. Nasty Man was kind of like. The first four bars was going to be to a whole another song. And then I want to say the beginning, the beginning middle was uh, another like IG post or something. And I just had it maybe for like six months. 
And I remember that was one of the last shows we had to record. It. Roper kept hitting me like, "Yo, what's good with it?" Like, yeah. and I was like, "Yo, I gotta." I was like, "I gotta wait for, I gotta wait for inspiration to finish it. It'd be finished when it." And a bunch of different stuff happened. I wrote that. I was like, "Bro, that song done." He was like, "Damn, that kind of stuff." <laughs> Damn. So like you have, so if you record something with Bruiser, Wolf, or have you? Oh, no, 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 not yet. But if you, like, you have four albums and you take some time to release them, that won't be released for, like, a minute. Oh, all right? four projects? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm not going to do five years in between. I'm going to kind of have them bump one. Oh, this one. Oh, this one. Like, yeah. I kinda, I'm kind of setting them up where it kind of falls in a certain... <laughs> Is it weird, like, having people listen to stuff that's so long ago? Like, that's such an old you, I bet. I don't know if you feel that. No, because I literally always listen to the songs. So, to me, like, it always holds the same power, like, because it came from a real place. So, literally, like... I can listen to it still and get a tear in my eye, a feel, a chill through my body. Like, oh, that was great. Like, I remember what I remember. I, I remember how I felt when I got off the phone with my mother and she was telling me about this situation when I wrote this right after. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's what I love about the new music. Like, because I think people may have a misconception of just like, all right, he might only talk about dark stuff or crazy. Like, yeah. to me, like a lot of the newer stuff is touching on everything from mental illness to violence in the community to yeah all all types of stuff like that people is going to be like oh my god cuz a project's just a project yeah. that's not who you are yeah, like yeah, a whole definitely. individual yeah, definitely. i think it's so funny um i but 3 years is like a long time for a project to I was happy listening to your new project that it was. I was going to say, I'll ask you, that it, was the new, was Cyber City like GLC? Not at all. Well, thank not, you, bro. But can I say what I want to like salute you to, and I hope you take this as a compliment, yeah, that it yeah. wasn't a bunch of like fly pelicans. Like you didn't like, you wanted to make what you wanted to make. Yeah, like that's yeah. a project that, again, isn't like you have to really sit with it and like understand it. Like, I don't know if you know who a rapper Serengeti is. I've been getting into him heavy recently. I heard the name before. Oh, I feel like you would really fuck with him. I want to say I'm familiar with... He's been making music since like 2006, and he raps in different characters, and all his different albums like tie together, and then he has other people make albums as characters that are part of his story and shit. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I like that he had one song in 2006, like the Bulls made into like an anthem, and he didn't like... He wanted to make the shit he wanted to make. Finish your champagne. <laughs> and he, that's, you see how he tried to get over that, right? Say like, no, I'm playing. <laughs> no, that's that's dope. But that's sure. what I liked. No, but that's what I liked about um your Cyber new City. Pro- Cyber well. City is because like you didn't just like oh this is what everyone this is what like might get me the most views. It's like no, mm. that's a project that I can tell from the artwork to the way you put it together to the bars to everything that you wanted to make. Yeah, no, hell yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely, I'm definitely excited for it to drop. I'm going to show everybody else, shout out to everybody else in the room, I love y'all all, and I'm drinking, so that's even more of a beautiful thing, but I'm going to show y'all some of the new drinks when we, when we, once we get off air, but definitely thank you, bro, for sure. Nah, of for course. Sure. So, okay, <laughs> who... Out of these four albums, like, when are they all going to be... Re- like, the reason I ask about... I'm drunk, if you can tell how I stumble on these questions, but I do have a point to this. When you... The reason I ask, like, do you feel like those songs are old? Like, when you record a new song, do you feel like, oh, god damn, it might be two years until people hear this. Like, I want people to hear what I'm doing right now. No, nah, because the... Even if it's two years or a year and a half, it still was a real emotion, and it still was a real thing that was happening. So... I kind of look at it like when the people hear it, they're gonna feel like exact. Cause again, nobody's gonna know that it's X amount of. Yeah. Like, it's kind of just. It's timeless. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like. And that's I think what we were talking about earlier about like not Russian projects putting out a ton in a year, which I do like, but sometimes that gets lost and it's not timeless. Like it's nice going back and listening to like old albums. There's very few albums I. 
you know, there's so much new music, it's hard to go back and listen to an album. Yeah, no. But I feel like this, your shit's different because it feels the. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I can't wait for it to. For the for it to start me and drop. Can I put some of this in your? No, chair? don't pour. It. I'm already. I would say you lit. already fucked up. I'm already fucked up. I used to oh, drink. Right, I used to drink crazy. Oh, you not drink. Okay. But you you drink. You can. Like I'll be real mad. You don't want that. You no, can. It's not the one with being you real can, mad. What's it's the most, levels of mad though? Don't not like lit. Not oh, lit oh, oh, to no. a bad extent. But what's like one of the most lit you ever got? The AT shots I ever clear into two edibles. That's probably my lit. That's probably. But that's my, not I, I, fun. I'm in the hall that's of, not fun. I'm in the Hall of Fame for that one. That's not fun though. None of it is ever fun. But I'm, in the, ever. I'm in the Hall of Fame for that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jack Daniels used to be my drink. Mm. I was a whiskey guy. I like Jack mixed with Ciroc. Jack and Ciroc. Wow. Yeah, I like to I like to mix them up, man. Because you because what I usually would do. I usually would do, I would go through different chambers. So let's say I usually would start with maybe a twisted tea and then have a beer and then have champagne and then get to the hard liquor fourth. Like, I, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I usually, I don't usually just do one. I usually like to step it up, step it up, step it up. Bang. And it gives you the energy. Like, yeah, like. And I don't be on some passed out, acting crazy. Throw, like, I keep yeah. it just regular. Like, you see, I'm just on some regular I chilling. Know. Do you like, drink when you're in the booth? Funny thing, I don't. I don't even eat before I go and record. Why? Just because it's kind of like, to me, just hearing it back, it kind of like makes you sound heavy on the mic. So, like, I like to go into the mic just yeah. on some nice. I get it. Yeah. Rick Ross sounds like you just ate every time. He goes into the That's booth. hard. It sounds like you just went to Wingstops. <laughs> Wingstop is overrated. I went there twice, and I wasn't that. I would go to Applebee's. Applebee's got better wings than Wingstop. Tell me I'm lying. God darn it. <laughs> God darn it. You can swear, but you can't use the Lord's name in vain. That's Okay. That's the rule on this podcast. I respect yes. it. I respect it. No, Applebee's, you know what? I have I never was really like a, this is going to sound like weird, but I was never like an Applebee. Oh, fan. Lord. I was a Chili's guy. You hear this shit? I was a Chili's guy. You shit me? Applebee's the best buy ever, man. I, I've been getting into Cheesecake Factory. My boy Jay will only eat at Cheesecake Factory. Cheesecake regular, unless you go between four and six, because they got the sliders, and then they got the uh, the buffalo uh, chicken uh, the buffalo chicken joint. You know what you're talking about. Yes, you I do this cheesecake shit. Applebee's thing. What's God. your favorite fast food? Applebee's. <laughs> That's not fucking... <laughs> Chinese food, man. You want to be sponsored by Applebee's? No, no. I would take it. Applebee's, holla at me. No spot is better than Applebee's would food. like. Uh, I don't me? think Applebee's would like fucking Malcolm X, <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer. Same <laughs> the person. Same person. That could be their slogan. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You know they're gonna cut that. Me saying that, <laughs> they're gonna be like Sam Buck thinks uh, that. I'm like, no, he didn't. <laughs> it was on the Applebee's commercial. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> that Chinese be. food. That's the best food, man. Chinese food is the. Best. I want to open up my own Chinese spot. That's that's one of my uh, really Chinese spot half liquor store. That's one of my things that that's I'm like that I'm aiming. <laughs> that's one of my things I'm aiming for. Wait, a Chinese food store or just a Chinese store? A Chinese food spot. Slash, okay, I didn't know if it was just like a Chinese store. store like Chinese food like... on one side, liquor on the other. Side. Okay, and it's gonna be party time. God damn it! And no full fish. Yeah, yeah, the full fish can fucking go. <laughs> the full fish can fucking just yeah. general general guy. General toast, <laughs> chicken and broccoli, the honey wings, the fried wings, the rice, the egg roll, all that good stuff. <laughs> you like Thai food? Yeah, Roper is a uh, huge Thai food guy. What if I really? Used, yeah, he used I was to, about to tell a story, but people wouldn't like it. He used to always he used to always going going to the uh, the Thai food joints heavy. All right, I'll um. <laughs> I'll tell you this story. No. Should I tell this story? To tell it off air, man. Oh, well, if you yeah, don't I'll tell it off air. I don't yeah, think this story. Queen. Queen. Hello, we're just yeah. finishing up. Oh, my God. My queen. I yeah, love your outfit. Here. And the hair. It matches. Like a beautiful Grinch. <laughs> like a beautiful Grinch. Yeah. And you're the, Lindy, you're the Cindy Lou Who? I'm Santa Claus of the neighborhood. <laughs> you're Santa Claus? I'm Santa Claus with an uh, Amsterdam bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Tag that guy. Guys, if y'all hear other people say that, I'm already lit, so I think this is the time that we should end the podcast. Okay.
And I'll say this. Shout out to the Bucked Up Podcast with the one and only Sam Buck. Give it up for the one and only Sam uh, Buck. Thank Shout out to everybody so in the much. room. I love all of y'all. Thank y'all for having hey, me. Man, thank Happy you. New Year. It was amazing. And we're going to party the rest of the night and act crazy in here. No, I, thank you very much because I appreciate you reaching out to me. And then I'm happy we finally got to make this work. You're going to thank me for introducing you to him. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>